Hi everyone, it's Giselle with a message for today and today I want to talk about how we can manifest what we want and we really don't need to know how. I'll give you two examples of the two most crazy, inexplicable things that have happened on my manifesting journey and If I can do this, I'm sure that you can at some point if you can't do it straight away. Just know that you can build yourself up to being able to do so. And what I also want to share is that you don't need to bargain with the universe because this is what I used to do, right? So I've always been good at manifesting ever since I was little. But I didn't realize that I could just have what I want without needing to exchange something. I think I just maybe watched The Little Mermaid one too many times. You know how Ariel exchanged her voice, um, exchanged her voice for um, legs. <laughs> and so I thought that's how it would... Wo- I can't get my words out. <clears throat> Sorry, I've been taking too many lozenges and my tongue feels chemical burn. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I thought that in order for you to get something, you have to exchange something for it. So... I didn't know that you could just get what you wanted and that be that, you know? So I always used to bargain with the universe. I used to say, can I have this talent and exchange you this thing that I have? <clears throat> Excuse me. Or can I have this friend in exchange for that friend? It's like, what kind of a stupid thing? But that's what I thought. Apparently, that's not how it works. But that's what I used to do. And I used to be quite good at manifesting, exchanging that this for that, you know. But then years later, I'll tell you the first story that was absolutely miraculous that I just couldn't explain. Still to this day, I can't figure it out, but it had happened somehow. So I was keeping a house key for my friends just in case they locked themselves out, they could call me because we live very close. And in case they ever needed the house key, I had one spare. But what happened, I was walking home one night and I stupidly had their house key clipped on a new key ring. But rather than attaching it to the key ring itself where it just wouldn't be able to come off, I attached it to the little clip that you hook onto a bag you know the little thing that you can just push down and then it would open so it's it wasn't very secure at all which stupidly I should not have done that in hindsight but I did right so I took my key out of my pocket checking for my house key and the little hook thing caught onto my jacket and his key fell (laughs) out and I thought oh god where is it and then I heard um I heard it pinging against some metal and I thought, oh oh no, I dropped it on the floor. And as I was looking for it, I could just about see it balancing on a grid, on, you know, one of the little grid things in the street where it then goes into the, yeah, into, what you call that? Um, Into the drain. So, and you know how deep the drain goes. I don't even know how deep it goes, but I, I couldn't get to it, right? So... I saw it bouncing on, oh my god, oh my god, it's gonna fall, it's gonna fall, and it did, it just fell into the drain, and I thought, oh no, 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 it's gonna kill me, oh my god, I, I, I don't know what to do, I honest to god did not know what to do, so I took my, my torch out, and looked for it, and it had gone, it just gone, I thought, oh, okay, okay, well, this is the end, isn't it, he is gonna murder me, <laughs> so I went home that night, And I'd just gotten into reading all sorts of different books. And there was this little book of, I can't remember what it was called exactly, but it had a little prayer in it. And there's a saint that um, was mentioned in this book that you could say a little prayer to, to help retrieve um, this whatever object that you'd lost. So I thought, you know what? I've got nothing to lose. I don't know what I'm going to do. I might as well say a little prayer because I've got literally nothing to lose. What's the worst that could happen? 
the keys could turn up. And if they do, amazing. If they don't, oh well, I tried at least something because I don't know what else to do. So I said the little prayer. I didn't think anything more of it. I went to bed and I thought, oh well. And um, a couple of days later, <clears throat> my friend called me and they said, did you leave your key on the downstairs little table where people put post in my flat? And I was just like, uh, yeah, I must have. <laughs> Knowing full well that I didn't and it fell into the drain. Um... So then I said, oh, so what, you, you've you got the key on the little table? And he said, well, you, you sound like you didn't do that. I was like, okay, i got to confess something. I lost your key. He goes, what? Yeah, I'm sorry. I did lose your key. Uh, I'm very sorry. But it's here. I said, well, yeah, well, I don't know how. Well, it's there. Great. Awesome. Wow. I don't know how this happened. But somehow someone must have found the key. God knows how. I don't know, posted it through the letterbox of his flat. But it could have been any flat because the key wasn't marked with an address. It was just in those tiny little, you know, the little rubber handle, like a little handle cover. I don't know what you call those. Like a little sleeve, right? And that was all it had, a little lilac coloured sleeve. But it didn't have any house numbers, or anything. So it could have been anyone's key. Somehow, whoever found it posted it through the house letterbox of that property. And then whoever found it on the floor put it on the little table where the post um, is being kept for people to collect. I mean, if that's not a miracle, I, I don't know what is, you know? So I thought I would share that little story because it makes you think, wow, I really don't need to know the hows in order for something to happen. Something as unlikely as that. And I'm sure you've had problems in the past that you have, you know, well, not in the past necessarily, well, just any problem that maybe isn't even as complicated as that. Because um, I have no idea still to this day how that could have happened, but it did. And the second example I want to give is how I received contact in the most unlikely way. Um, as you know, my love and I had been in separation, proper separation. There was no way of me getting in touch. There was no social media. There was no phone number. Phone number was deactivated. They were abroad. <laughs> and... Yeah, there was absolutely no way, no way for me to get in touch, right? So at that point, I'd given up. I was like, okay, well, I can't get in touch. The universe is going to have to step in and help here somehow. So what I did was put myself in a positive mood. Every night before bed, I would think about them in a really good way. Every morning as I woke up, I would think about them in a really good way. Counting on the fact that I would get contact somehow. Not knowing how, I mean, I didn't have any way of getting in touch, but then I didn't have to because I trusted the universe would do it for me. And lo and behold, about, I think maybe, I don't know, when did I start that process? Maybe eight days later, I got contact. Out of the blue, a number that I didn't have on my phone contacted me. I was like, oh, what's this? And it was them. They couldn't have known that I still wanted to hear from them at that point. We hadn't been in touch for over a year. But it happened. And if something like that can happen, without needing to initiate any physical um, effort on your part, just faith and positive thinking and good vibes and knowing and counting on the universe, that they will help you somehow... Not knowing how exactly. You don't need to figure out the how. I mean, I didn't know that that was going to happen. But it did. I just focused on the end result, which was being back in contact. Just like I did with those keys. I kind of thought, well, it'd be nice if I got those keys back. But 
Ah, at this point, I've no idea how that's going to happen. But I, you know, it might. And so I wanted to share these stories with you because I wanted to illustrate. And I'm sure I've got more than these two examples, but these are just the most jaw-dropping, crazy examples that I could think about right now. That I could think up to, to use in this video. I have more, but I just, yeah, these are the most crazy ones where you're like, what? How is that even possible? And if these things can happen for me, then I know that you can get what it is that you're wanting. As you probably will have noticed, my video style has changed a little bit since I've had my little break and my illness. <laughs> but my, my little break especially. Because we need to change the collective thinking in the Twin Flame community. I think that people have just gotten too used to being helpless, feeling hopeless, and go, a lot of people are thinking they want to just give up. But I want to illustrate that you don't have to give up and that miracles can happen without you needing to put in any physical effort, just spiritual effort. And that you don't need to know the hows and the whys and the wheres. But the universe will sort that out. All you need to do is keep the faith. Have a clear picture of what it is that you do want. And stop contradicting with something that you don't want. And I'm working on a few things. And as soon as I get tangible evidence that those things have worked. I'm going to share them with you. Because that's what I want to help you do. I want to help you to manifest the life that you're wanting because we're not here to be victimized or to only have a 5D relationship. That's nonsense. I don't believe in that. And if you have the same beliefs as me, as in we can make a tangible third dimensional union happen and this life to be exactly what we want it to be, then I'll be happy to take you along my journey and help you attain what you're wanting too because it brings me so much joy when I receive feedback from my clients you know to say oh I managed to get this or this or I had a breakthrough emotional breakthrough with this and this and I'm over my past hurts and your healing really helped lift this off me and I now finally can do this it's like oh I'm it brings me so much joy to be able to witness that with you. So I hope that this video has inspired you to at least shift your thinking. If you didn't think that miracles were possible, at least to be open to the possibility to think, well, maybe she's right. Maybe there's something to this. Maybe miracles happen. At least open up your mind a tiny bit. You don't have to be full on. Yeah, Giselle can make miracles happen. So can I. If you think that's too far fetched, that's okay. But if you're open to it at least a little bit, I hope that this video has done that for you. Or at least helped you. A, a, a tiny little shift. That's all. You know, you don't need to be full blown. I'm going to cause a miracle to happen. Just a tiny, tiny shift. And if you feel that I could help you personally on your journey through either reading, healing, coaching, um, just anything, just have a little look at my website. I haven't put on a coaching session because that's usually what I do as part of your healing anyway. But if people think I should put specifically a coaching session on there, I can. That's not a problem. So yeah, um, I thank you for listening to me. For being open to these ideas. Because that's what I want to help. Is to shift collective thinking into being empowered and to knowing that you have the magic and you can do whatever you want. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm still offering you some discounts for my month of April for hitting more subscribers this month. And if you'd like to take advantage of those, just go on to the link to my website. I'll put it in the description box. I thank you all so very much for watching and have a beautiful day. Namaste.